In 2010 I found an interesting book by Igor Witkowski which first was published in Poland. Its title Pravda o Wunderwaffe – The Truth About the Wunderwaffe. This book holds very interesting copies of American Secret Service reports about the use of directed energy weapons by Germany in World War II. I use the Czech edition. On page 87 and 88 we find a report about Lieutenant Hitt flying a two-engine P-38 reconnaissance plane over Frankfurt, Germany. The report to Brigadier General George C. MacDonald, dated January 24, 1945, is titled Preliminary Report on Suspected Magnetic Ray. It states 1. This is a preliminary report on investigation of the P-38 aircraft which flew 3832 over Frankfurt and the interrogation of the pilot Lieutenant Hitt. Over this area the pilot encountered a freakish condition which indicates that the enemy may be using some new device, suspected as being a magnetic ray, as a defense measure against our aircraft. 2. The pilot made three passes over the target area, which was the northern part of Frankfurt, for the purpose of taking aerial photographs. He took a number of frames on his first two passes at approximately 22,000 feet and 20,000 feet. But on his third pass at 17,500 feet he ran into trouble with his aircraft. At this time he was flying in a straight slightly climbing condition. No flak of any kind was encountered and no evasive notion was taken during the whole time over the target area. Three. In beginning his third pass, his instruments began acting up and his left engine became very rough. He tried for approximately a minute and a quarter to correct the engine condition, that is, changing mixture control to auto rich and back and changing rounds per minute and manifold pressure. During this time, the fuel pressure gauge and rounds per minute were fluctuating very excessively. Puffs of black smoke were observed from the turbo. After trying to correct the condition, he observed flames coming from the turbo and fearing a fire, he immediately feathered the engine. 4. The other gorges and instruments which were affected include the fuel level gorges, gear compass and the artificial horizon. The hands on the fuel level gorges started spinning in the same direction. The gyro compass was also spinning through 360 degrees revolutions. The pilot caged the compass at three different times and after uncaging, each time the compass continued to spin through 360 degrees revolutions. The artificial horizon was floating at a peculiar attitude so that it could not be used. 5. The pilot stated that his right engine also ran rough but the coolant temperature of both engines remained normal during the time that the trouble was encountered. 6. Lieutenant Hitt had a wingmate who was covering the target in the southern part of Frankfurt. At no time was his wingmate closer than one mile of the area in which Lieutenant Hitt encountered the trouble and apparently his wingmate did not encounter the same peculiar troubles. His wingmate landed at Manston for refueling and has not been interrogated to date. 7. After Lieutenant Hitt encountered this trouble, he could not use his instruments and radioed to his wingmate for orientation and his wingmate accompanied him part of the way back. His radio apparently functioned properly. 8. The instruments on Lieutenant Hitt's ship continued acting up for a period of 8 to 10 minutes. After this time, they appeared to be functioning properly. 9. Preliminary examination of the left engine showed the following. Compression of all cylinders was normal and there were no metallic particles in the Kuno, which indicates that there is probably no internal failure. However, both the intake and exhaust plugs in the right bank, inboard side, were very badly fouled, including metallic lead globules white ash and carbon. And all the plugs on the left bank, both intake and exhaust, were very clean. 
The fact that both the intake and exhaust plugs in the right bank have metallic lead fouling indicates that there was probably intermittent firing of these cylinders. 10. The ignition system on this engine consists of a dual magneto and two distributors, one on the right bank and one on the left bank. One side of the magneto services all the exhaust plugs on both banks through the distributor on the right bank. And the other side of the magneto services all the intake plugs on both banks through the distributor on the left bank. And the fact that both the intake and the exhaust plugs on only one bank were so badly fouled makes it very puzzling in trying to analyze any part of an ignition breakdown due to a magnetic ray. The ignition system will be checked thoroughly in detail by the engineering officer and a report of any trouble rendered to this office. No instruments were at hand at the time of the initial inspection for checking the aircraft for any evidence of residual magnetism. However, a check of this nature is being followed through immediately by Captain Unreadable. 12. The preliminary medical check of the pilot did not show any peculiar symptoms or conditions. 13. The fact that Lieutenant Hitt's wingmate was as close as a mile to him at the time of this trouble indicates that whatever peculiar ray the Germans may be using is being beamed. 14. With further examination it may be possible that the engine trouble may be explained by some normal ignition malfunctioning. But the way the flight instruments and the fuel gorges acted up indicate that there is definitely something to the supposition that the Germans may be using some type of magnetic ray and it should be followed up without delay so that countermeasures may be developed. We are Petersen, Captain. Pravdau Wunderwaffe holds another US document about a similar incident on Sortie 3598 on November 19, 1944. As soon as the pilot entered the target area around the Schluchsee, his electrical compass commenced spinning around, the magnetic compass became erratic and the landing gear warning light came on again. To prevent any possible influences upon his engines, the pilot increased and decreased the rounds per minute by several hundred every few seconds. He commenced this as he approached the target area and continued until he was well out of the area. He reported having no trouble with the engines and due to his preventive action could not tell whether any foreign influence was exerted upon them. While over the target area the electrical compass continued spinning erratically. The pilot several times cut off the current to the compass. When turned back on, the compass functioned normally for an instant in each case and then spun around once more. Finally he cut off the current until he crossed the Rhine en route to England. The compass then seemed to function normally, although it has not been checked for variation. The malfunctioning of Lieutenant Hitt's instruments during 8 to 10 minutes allows some conclusions as to the range of the German directed energy weapon. A P-38 is a very fast plane and one could assume a speed of about 500 km per hour while on a reconnaissance flight. Most likely Lieutenant Hitt was flying straight over the target area without turning to take the pictures. So he was attacked over a distance of 60 to 80 km. If a single installation was used it would have had a minimum range of 30 km. A single installation seems likely because Lieutenant Hitt's wingmate was not attacked. The countermeasures taken by the pilots show that they were well aware of the threat and its nature. Changing the rounds per minute of the engines obviously was done to prevent the directed energy weapon to lock on the ignition system. The pilots were aware that the directed energy weapon did not fire a fast train of random pulses, which is a possible approach to interfere with the ignition of an engine. The US knew or suspected the German directed energy weapon to pick up the noise produced by the ignition system. 
This noise is a result of the spark bridging the gap of the spark plug. The radio frequency noise is radiated by the ignition cable and can be picked up at a distance. This allows to send directed energy pulses shortly before the ignition occurs and while the intake and exhaust valves both are open to flush the burnt gas out of the cylinder. In this case the premature ignition causes the burning gases to expand into the exhaust and into the carburetor. The smoke and the flames from the turbo support this as it does the rough running of the engine. These US reports allow no doubt about the use of directed energy weapons by Germany to attack Allied aircrafts. Likewise, there are German reports about directed energy motor stop middle, engine stoppers, used by the German army against US ground forces. They were small enough to be carried by one person, similar to this model from 1929. The insufficient effect was a result of a relatively complicated technology which was not soldier proof but required training, a favorable environment and a target not protected by coils, capacitors and a high resistance ignition cable.